I'd like to start by saying that 500 years ago, new lands were discovered by sailing the oceans. Today, we're just about to discover new worlds by sailing the cosmic ocean. So I'd like to start by a personal story. This is a wooden ship that I was taken by my grandmother when I was a kid. And this is the flagship of Christopher Columbus, Santa Maria, at the port of Barcelona, my town. I got totally amazed and connected with that sense of discovery. The age of discovery not only was about discovering, it was also about connecting. The whole world got connected for the first time. What it meant for humanity was that it created knowledge, it created technology, and thanks to that, we've been on a course of human progress. Just by depicting that human progress in two pictures, it really gives you the sense of how much we have grown as a species, right? Uh, let me just put you, of course, some figures that you already know. But we went from barely 30 years old of life expectancy to more than 70. And then also we went from barely 500 million people on Earth to 7 billion. And if we put this into every single graph that you want to see within the last 500 years, our growth has been exponential. And I'd like to introduce four locations just to see how much we have grown over the last few years. Those four pictures, satellite pictures, depict different areas. The first one on the top left, China, the factory of the world. The second one, Dubai. Probably you don't recognize it because it was a desert at that time. The third one, the Amazonia in Rondonia in Brazil. And the fourth, what we call the ground zero of climate change. It's the Columbia Glacier. Let me go just quickly by sliding what's today. Just to see, for example, that area in China, how has been urbanized so amazingly. And how, for example, from scratch, we have built cities. And we've also given all these resources from Earth. Basically, at the end, getting this kind of challenge, which is climate change. And we are now immersed. As humanity, or as I see it, this is not to be like saying, hey, doomsday. The Earth is going to be die tomorrow, right? I mean, that's the kind of news we receive every day, yes? But let's scope, let's just open the scope of that vision. As I see it, I think Earth is pregnant of humanity. That's the stage where we are right now. And probably we are at the ninth month, and we've seen the first steps. The moon landing and the international space stations represents those first steps for the next human species. Here, I'm depicting the fact that that amazement of seeing people beyond our Earth changed our mind in many ways. The first is by seeing the universe. We haven't seen the universe before like that. So this picture that you see here is taken by the Hubble telescope. It depicts 10,000 galaxies. Okay, 20 million of these slides represent right now what we can observe. And this is our limitation so far because as technology goes, we're seeing farther and farther. What I'm trying to put here is the fact that we've seen and we have confirmed for the first time new planets, new worlds far beyond our solar system. We have discovered right now 2,000. Well, that's not much. That's what? Nothing. In our galaxy, it's estimated that there's 100 billion planets. 100 billion. So 2,000 of, a, uh, two of 100 billion is not that much. But that's a start. Out of those 2,000, we have discovered 31 potential habitable planets, which means that they are in an area like Earth. We call that a habitable zone, an area where life could exist. Well, what we propose, and I'm saying we, because we are sort of uh, several organizations working in that effort, is to, for the first time in history, propose a manned mission to discover those potential habitable worlds. We want to go there, and we are working for that. And right now, we are about 
on the order of 10,000 people from different organizations working in several areas, from engineering, sociology, ethics, religion, all of the fields that you can imagine. And of course, great ideas are pumping out of this. So the first, let's say, hurdle that we have is that to get to those planets is far away. With the current technologies, we would spend 400,000 years to reach. Right now, we have worked out four ways to reach there. The first one is, of course, human hibernations. Let's get frozen, and when we see that there is a potential habitable planet, let's wake up and see if we can detect that life could be easier. The second one is a world ship. Basically, make a world inside of an asteroid and let it go, like a bottle in the, in the sea or in the ocean. The third one is, okay, let's make what we call astrophysics bending space and time. We can get there in a few days. That's going faster than light, yet it's not in the realm of possibilities. But still, we're studying also this, pos this technology. And the fourth one, which is the most probable, is sailing, using the solar winds to impulse our sails as Columbus and other discoverers did 500 years ago to propel our starship to get to those habitable planets. The other problem that we have, which is economic, to build the International Space Station, we have to spend 100 billion. Well, to be doing our mission, we would spend 10 times more. Okay, just to be quickly giving you the project, this is the framework that we are working on. Basically, these are the technologies and the industries that we would be working on. And by doing this kind of effort, we would be able to transform the world. And I'd like to finish my presentation by proposing you the next three destinations for your travel vacation. Go to these three exoplanets because in one you will feel amazing gravity because it's a super earth. The second one has a double sun where you're going to be enjoying a double shadow. And the third one, there's no sun, is a rock planet that you will be all the time, all the night having fun in your nightlife. Thank you very much.